Welcome back to Small Caps, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kerry Stevenson, and today I'm pretty excited to bring back Matt Gorsey. He's the managing director of Nickel X. ASX code is NKL. I think it's NKL. Yeah, NKL. I thought I was, I was like, hmm. Uh, anyway, most of you will know in the past couple of weeks, there's been a really, really big price rise in nickel. So I'm going to ask Matt to talk about macro for nickel. But today as well, I've just announced the acquisition of the Cosmos South Nickel Project. So Matt, lots to chat about today. Welcome back to Small Caps. Yeah, good to be with you, Kerry, as always. Um, yeah, really excited about um, the approval of shareholders to acquire Cosmos South. It was effectively 100% uh, approval to acquire the project. Um, it was a really much a fait accompli. So we're really excited to get on the ground and do some work on that particular project, which um, effectively outranks um, our project, which we listed on being the Burnup Nickel Project. Um, so yeah, we're, we're all head down, bum up. Well, uh, for those for those that don't know, Matt, first of all, you're a, you're a geologist by background, but you really, really understand the nickel market. I want to go into the macro in a little while, but before I do that, is the focus for Nickel X going to move from Biran up to Cosmos South? And as a geo, what do you like so much about it? So for the investors out there, I need them to understand, I guess, the investment thesis and why you're so interested in this particular area, this project? Yeah, so um, there's no doubt that um, Cosmos South outranks our existing projects at Birana from a nickel prospectivity perspective. Um, we started a prospectivity model, uh, which is built by um, some specialist PhD uh, geologists um, that compile geological, geophysical, geochemical data across um, South East Yilgarn, which is where we are, uh, and then also building on the South West Yilgarn. So there'll be a bunch of other opportunities we're going to come across. Um, but yeah, Cosmos South definitely stood out as an opportunity worthwhile having a having a crack at, so to speak. Um, and the Bendors are more than keen to um, put it into uh, a new float. And Nicolax is only sort of nine months old in terms of uh, being listed on the ASX. So, um, yeah, it was a logical decision to, to effectively have a crack at this project. And um, geophysically, they're some of the largest um, EM conductors we've seen um, across West Australia, particularly the South uh, East Hill Gun. Um, and then geologically, clearly it, it adjoins Cosmos, which is taken over um, you know, to the tune of 3.1 billion uh, back in the day in 2009. Uh, IGO are taking over Western areas um, to take on that project um, to the tune of 1.2 billion, I think it is. Um, and then BHP are just south of us. So it, it's, it's golden ground. And um, so it's kind of this is the nickel producing world in and around where you are. And so you've got a chunk of this area. So you know, where do you find nickel? Where other people are finding nickel, I guess. So talk to us about the terms of the deal and what's going to happen. Because this is brand new, just just, uh, just the acquisitions just happened. So let us know about the uh, terms and what you plan to do. Yeah, pretty straightforward deal. Um, vendors are really keen to um, get it done and dusted uh, really simply and easily. So I think it was about 350 grand worth of stock um, to the vendor and, uh, it was done and dusted without uh, too many issues. Um, and so, yeah, we all own 100% of the project, or we do own 100% of the project. So, yeah, pretty simple. But do, do you have to spend a certain amount uh, in the ground to get that 100%, or is it just, you know, that they've got the shares now, they're, they're involved in that way, and that's it? Yeah, so as I said, it's a really simple deal. We don't, don't really um, agree or want to deal with um, vendors who require you to spend X, Y, Z. It was just okay. a straight uh, share deal. Take it on. They're in the in the stock. Um, happy to ride the stock. Happy to um, support the company from a number of different uh, factors. So, yeah, oh, easy. Oh, so what do you plan to do over the next couple of months? This has happened. What are the plans to, to, to work out what you've got there? 
Yeah, so the majority of the work we're doing in the next month will be magnetic surveys, and that's to track uh, effectively the ultra matrix, which we know uh, runs from Cosmos down to Cosmos South, our project, and uh, runs north from Leinster into our project. Um, so it'll be a lot closer spaced uh, mag surveys than what's been previously done. We're really comfortable with the EM surveys that have been done previously by New Exco and you know, they're the go-to team um, for, for nickel exploration in WA. Um, you know, clearly the, the go-to team that found Nova and, and so forth. Yeah. Uh, so we're happy with that. Um, and then, yeah, straight up, diamond drilling. Not, not mucking around, just getting into it. You, you're quite well funded as well, aren't you? Because as you said before, you listed about nine months ago. And in fact, you and I spoke in August. So ladies and gentlemen, if you want to know sort of the bigger picture of Nickel X, go back. Uh, Nickel X, August of last year, Matt and I had a chat just after they listed. Um, but you really like the nickel space, Matt. And there was a lot of chat about the fact that the nickel price rose quite substantially. And I think it's now sitting 40, 45,000. Can you just give our viewers your view? Because you are you have a really good understanding of nickel and why you think that this is a good commodity for people to be looking at. Yeah, look, as West Australian nickel is part of our heritage, it is what it is. Um, there's three factors at play here. I think, Kerry, um, no doubt the market fundamentals being supply demand, there's an enormous disequilibrium happening at the moment. Um, there's not enough supply coming onto the market at the moment. Um, inventories are down to 70,000 tonnes, I think, on the LMA and demand, as BHP said, is going to increase fivefold. Wow. Up to 2030, and that's just purely on the basis of the EVs. So effectively, we supply 70% of the market is stainless steel. That is what it is. It's always been there. Um, and then 30% is EVs. But that 30% for EVs will increase to what we think is about 50% in the next five or eight years. The, the second factor is clearly the, the spectre of um, sanctions on Russian nickel producers being the rules. They supply about 10% of the world's nickel and then about 20% of the world's uh, nickel for EVs and for lithium-ion batteries. So there's a real risk there that um, that would come into play. I don't think it will. I don't, it's not a huge income for Russia, so they don't really care. Uh, and then clearly this margin call is just one once in a lifetime. Um, and the biggest nickel producer in the world has been caught in a margin call. I had to write out an $8 billion uh, check to the LMA. And, Not a big. Uh, <laughs> I'd say supported by the Chinese government, but ultimately, um, yeah, LMA's back in uh, play at 40000 bucks, 45, and that's, yeah, extraordinary price uh, for nickel based on... Well, I think based on pure supply, demand, fundamentals, which is what we all operate on. Yeah, and Matt, I really appreciate the fact that you do, you know, this, it is a commodity that you do understand. Do you think it's a little, um, uh, I, I guess it, it's really had a good, strong price rise. Um, so there will be projects out there that will become, that weren't economic, that now are economic. Is it sustainable at these levels? Have you seen anything like this in your lifetime of working in the in this space? No, I never. I, I don't think anyone has. It, it's totally unprecedented. Um, it, it may well be that some of the nickel lateral projects might uh, come into play from a feasibility perspective, um, and they're clearly... Nickel laterite have got enormous tons um, and low grade, clearly. But uh, at forty, forty-five thousand dollars a ton, they might come on stream. But we're talking five, ten years before they come on stream. So, um, yeah, nickel X is purely focused on nickel sulfides, which are high grade, pure um, projects. So, um, but it, yeah, is very, but it is very early days for you. So what I want to know from our investors that are out there, um, the three reasons why you think right now is a time for people to sit up and take notice of Nickel X. Yeah, look, we're purely focused on one of the world's greatest uh, nickel producing belts, being the uh, Waluna Greenstone Belt. Uh, we have a project uh, that's sitting 
in between IGO and BHP, the smartest guys in the room, uh, biggest producers of nickel in the world. Um, and we're purely focused on nickel sulfide and we hope to replicate um, what uh, Kerry Habermanis did with Cosmos uh, back in the day with the $3 billion takeover. Uh, and yeah, purely um, technically focused on uh, our project at the moment. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. They do know what they're doing. Good team that understands uh, the nickel, uh, not just supply demand, but geologically where to look. Uh, as Matt just said, they're sandwiched in between two of the very strong nickel producers at the moment. And uh, as you said earlier, it's it's really um, the epicentre of the nickel producing world. So lots more news to come, Matt. Really be keen to hear how you go with the initial drilling. So pop back on once, once this is all settled down. But I really just wanted us to find out about the acquisition today and let people know that there's some exciting times ahead for Nickel X. Thanks for joining me at Small Caps. Thanks very much, Gary. Good to be with you.